Good afternoon, YouTube. We are here today for week three of the War of Art. And this is just us going through and um, learning how to break through your inner battles and or to break through the blocks and win your inner creative battles. And this is talking about resistance and how we can avoid doing some of our creative tasks and the things that we really enjoy doing and how we can actually start to show up and, and do some stuff for ourselves. Um, so we have Kim here in the chat. Hi, Kim, welcome. Um, I'm starting this like 15 minutes later than normal, so I had a chance to get in touch with my peeps, so I'm glad you guys were able to still make it um, a little bit later today. Um, so did you guys get a chance to read through the book? Um, if you're out there watching and you have not had a chance to get your book yet, I recommend that we support this author, that we're um, going through the content and, and purchase your book. But if not, um, go ahead and just follow along with us. You can hop in at any time and you don't have to really, you can just hit the ground running. Um, so Kim, hopefully you got through reading uh, the chapter, or it wasn't the chapter, we're reading pages 26 through 39 today. I know Zandra already had read it. Um, so the first page is resistance and self-medication. And we're just going to go ahead and look at this. It says um, one time this person has attention deficit disorder. You know, somebody has seasonal effect disorder where, you know, the, the winters can be really hard. We get a little depressed. Anxiety disorders. Um, and, you know, Stephen's point of view in here is that these are marketing employees and not really diseases. Um, I know a lot of how we view some of these things are changing. Um, I think they're moving like a lot of things around medically, but um, Steven's, Steven's standpoint is that these are marketing employees. Um, he says depression and anxiety may be real, but they can also be resistance, which is an interesting way of looking at that. Um, and um, he's saying that when we drug ourselves to blot out our soul's call, we are being good Americans and exemplary consumers. And we're doing exactly what the TV commercials and pop culture has brainwashed us to do. Um, I think this is interesting because personally, I think a, a lot of people um, are just living lives that aren't very sustainable or balanced. And I think that that can be a cultural thing. And maybe that's what he's pointing to. Um, if you guys are out here um, and you have anything to add, go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, but yeah, so he's saying that you know, if you do, instead of applying self-knowledge, self-discipline, delayed gratification and hard work, we simply consume a product, which at this point is like a medication he's saying. Um, so he's saying, yeah. Mm, I don't know. That page was kind of interesting. Um, I think a lot of what we're going over in this book is going to be, you know, everybody's going to have different opinions on it. So I do encourage you guys to take this with a grain of salt and weigh it against your own heart and come to your own conclusion because this is somebody's opinion um, and there's helpful information in here still regardless of if we agree with everything or not. Um, Kim's in the chat and she says, I don't agree with him. Um, you know, I think that I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Kim. I kind of, like, I think that oftentimes, yo, Zandra, what's up? Zandra's here. Um, Zandra, we were just talking about in the first page how he's saying resistance is self-medication. Um, and he's seen some things about, you know, depression. Um, yes, we did just cover the self-medication section. Um, and I, I, I think that one way I can look at this is, that um, oftentimes we have coping mechanisms that form as habits. And a lot of times, you know, we can avoid the work that we want to do as a habit. And that's a can be a result of, you know, maybe needing to take care. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? So Kim says she doesn't really agree with him. I'm trying to figure out how I could spin that and agree with it. Um, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> So Zondra, I'm sure you have a comment to say about that. Um, I think you were, because 
yeah, uh, so let me know what you think. Um, and then the next thing we have here is resistance and victimhood. Oh, so Zondra says, I agree that capitalism sells us things, but I don't agree that it doesn't mean the things don't exist. Right, yeah. So, yeah, so from what Zondra's saying, like, that kind of sounds like what I was trying to say, too, where, like, we don't have a healthy system in which we live, which um, Zondra's describing as capitalism. Um, yeah, so I think just like culturally, we run ourselves into the ground and we don't really take care of our mental health very well. Um, and we put ourselves in situations to where we can develop disorders and things. Oh, <sighs> okay, so Kim says, he was probably raised in a time when people did not voice their problems and were pushed under the rug. Yeah, I think so. Um, and then Zondra saying it is a real problem, but they do oversell how big the problem is. Um, Zondra's agreeing with Kim. And <laughs> Zondra says uh, he's very much a suck it up. Uh, I think she said A with a bunch of asterisks, so I think she's a very suck it up asshole. Um, <laughs> yeah, he is very much a suck it up. Um, just, you know, show up, do the work. Um, um, whereas, like, Julia Cameron... Um, has a show up, do the work standpoint as well, like in our um, artist way book, but she's a little bit more gentle about it um, and can go in a little bit more holistically. Um, yeah, I think, like I said, like some of this is just crazy um, or like I don't necessarily agree with um, that standpoint anyway. Um, yeah, Zandra's saying that I, I got the message that she was trying to, to say. So yeah, yeah. So I don't know, that that's all right. Let's just move on. <laughs> I don't need to go into that too much. Um, Zondra says he strikes me as the kind of guy that would tell you to walk off a broken femur. Oh my God. <laughs> that <laughs> walk it off. You're like legs broken. No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that. He's very, mm -mm -mm. Kim says, amen, Zondra. Well, <laughs> Uh, some of it's helpful anyway, so. <laughs> um, so over here we have uh, resistance and victimhood. Unless you guys have anything else to add, feel free to add it. I'm just going to move on here, um, but feel free to chat. Um, so he's saying that uh, doctors are estimating that 70 to 80% of their business is non-health related. People aren't sick. They're self-dramatizing. Oh. <laughs> Um, sometimes the hardest part of a medical job is keeping a straight face. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. He's very hard ass in here. Um, he says the acquisition of a condition lends significant to one's existence, an illness across to where some people go from condition to condition. They cure one and the other one pops up. A victim act is a form of passion, passive aggressive <laughs> aggression. He says, um, uh, the victim compels others to come to his rescue or behave as he wishes by holding them hostage to the prospect of his own further illness, meltdown, mental dissolution, simply by threatening. I feel like, you know, again, this is like a blanket statement and, and this is him speaking to things as if everybody's coming from the same motivation, which I don't necessarily think is fair. Zondra says, again, I've seen this, people do this, but he acts like all are going to do this. Yeah, exactly. It's like, a, he's like, labeling everybody with it. Yo, Jawa's here. He says, hi, gang. Welcome, Jawa. Um, Zondra is saying hi to Jawa. And uh, yes, a blanket statement. Right. So Jawa, we're just talking about how this guy in this book is kind of like a hard ass and he kind of like blanket statements, things and entire groups of people who, and <laughs> so we're just kind of buzzing through it a little bit. Um, but glad you could make it. Welcome. I started the stream a little bit later than normal, like 15 minutes later. Um, so yeah, <laughs> let's just go on. Like, <laughs> so resistance and the choice of a mate. Maybe it's less threatening to believe that our beloved spouse is worthy to live out his or her unlived life while we are not, or maybe we're hoping to use our mate as a model. Um, oh, so this is talking about, um, you'll pick a mate who has or is successful in overcoming resistance, whereas you aren't. And so you're like kind of trying to ride on their coattails, I guess. 
And so he's saying that resistance disfigures love in this way. If you go after and, and pursue and create a relationship with somebody who's better at something than you, which I don't really like, this is weird. Um, hitchhike on our spouse's coattails. I think it is easy to coast on the success of somebody else or to feel intimidated by it rather than empowered by it. So I think it's all about like how you look at it, honestly. Um, so Zandra's saying going into the nitty gritty of his victimhood when people do do this, I find the passive aggressive is accurate. Yes. But that's like, again, a blanket statement. Like I've seen that as well. Um, Zandra says, I thought choice of a mate was interesting. Didn't go where I thought. Jawa says, interesting. Is he a know-it-all? <laughs> I think. <laughs> so Kim says, so he wrote this in 2002. Hopefully he has softened over the years and realizes all the conditions are real and justified. Yeah, I agree. Um, he's very, very hard-assy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is an interesting part of the book to be reading, but if we're getting a good discussion out of it, right? <laughs> I hope so. Oh my gosh. Zondra says, word Jawa, that he's a know-it-all. <laughs> you know, Stephen, if you're, Stephen Pressfield, if you're watching this, um, I guess, you know, feel free to comment in the in the chat and, you know, I, I'd like to hear your opinion. Um, it, as Kim says, have you... Have you, Stephen, um, kind of come to accept that maybe these are blanket statements? I don't know. Am I? <laughs> um, so Kim, Zondra says, Kim, probably not. Maybe that makes me the asshole. <laughs> well, you know, you guys have an opinion. That's, you know, everybody gets to say their piece. <laughs> oh, my God. So at the end, he says, and if we're the supported partner, shouldn't we step out from the glow of our loved one's adoration and instead encourage him to let his own light shine? Which I like. I like that. You know, you, we should be encouraging the people that are in our lives and lifting them up. So, all right, that's good. And then Zondra says, I expected him to be way more cynical in this section. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. But he's saying, if we're supporting our partner, shouldn't we face our own failure to pursue our unlived life rather than hitchhike on our spouse's coattails? Yeah. So so I think there is um, a call to action for both sides, which is nice. Um, Kim's, again, saying he that Stephen Pressfield was born in 1943 and his photos look like a hard ass. He was a seal, as I recall, says Zandra. Okay, well, you know, we've got some, you know, ingrained way of life. Well. Wow. <laughs> so resistance in this book is the next uh is the next section and he's saying that um uh let's see when i began this book resistance almost beat me this is the this is the form it took it told me the voice in my head that i was a writer of fiction not nonfiction, and that i shouldn't be exposing the concepts of resistance literally and overtly rather i should incorporate them metaphorically into a novel and that's a pretty damn subtle and convincing argument. The rationalization resistance presented me with was I should write, say, a war piece in which the principles of resistance were expressed as the fear of a warrior feels. So resistance also told me I shouldn't seek to instruct or put myself forward as a purveyor of wisdom, that this was in vain egotistical, possibly even corrupt, and that it would work to harm me in the end. That scared me, and it made a lot of sense. When I finally can... When it, what finally convinced me to go ahead and simply was simply that I was so unhappy not going ahead. I was developing symptoms. As soon as I sat down and began, I was okay. And I relate to this a lot. Um, um, a lot of the challenges that I put forth for myself um, seem really big and insurmountable or it's like, well, why do I want to do this? But um, once I kind of get that bug in my ear, I kind of just feel like I have to move forward with it if it, if it keeps coming up. So um, I really like that he pointed that out that, um, you know, you start to feel negative um, if you don't pursue the things, even the things that are scare scary for you that you'd like to do. So and he says here again, you know, as soon as he sat down to begin, he was OK. So Zondra says he's very military. If you oh, if you look at his books, this is his probably his most liberal. OK, so this is the most liberal book. Um, uh Kim says he wrote the screenplays for Bagger Vance, Above the Law, King Kong Lives, Army of One, Free Jack, and Separate Lives. 
Um, I haven't seen any of those. I'm assuming those are all kind of like, as Zandra says, very militant and like, um, like they sound kind of like, uh, oh gosh, you know, like American short stories is, is kind of what's coming up to my mind. Like they're like kind of like um, cynical a little bit maybe, um, but like serious and, and a little bit ironic is my guess. So Zandra says I related to the this book section. So many projects I have only done to get them to finally be quiet. Exactly, yeah. So you have to get through the project in order to, you know, yeah, you sit down and do it and then you fulfill it and you see it to the end and then like you get like this sense of relief. Um, and so I think uh, we get a habit of feeling that resistance. Um, we get a habit like anytime I, it's like Pavlov's bell, right? Um, so Pavlov trained his dog to salivate every time he heard the bell because every time he rang the bell, he fed the dog. So then the dog would associate salivating with the bell. So it's the same way with like resistance. Um, anytime you go to sit down to a new project and you're accustomed to feeling the resistance, um, even if you've powered through another project, you have to continue to power through those projects. And then every single one, the resistance will get less and less. Um, and often, so it's like, it's like, oh, I'm going to do this project. Okay, now cue the, you know, habit of avoiding it or walking around it or thinking about it um, is kind of how that reads to me. Um, Sandra saying that he wrote the novel Bagger Vance and that it was about golf. <laughs> that sounds, I don't watch golf, so I probably wouldn't want to read a book about golf, but some people would probably love it. Um, Kim says, like the quiet reference Zandra <laughs> yeah so um, <laughs> we get shrugs sometimes here in book club that's okay um so resistance and unhappiness and again I'm just like I with all, with all this like mental stuff like I really it, it boils down to habits for me like how can you like retrain and redirect your mind and do something else um the power of the mind man Zandra says they're like little kids in my brain and no nap time <laughs> exactly yeah it's hard to it's hard to focus <laughs> I feel it but uh what does resistance feel like first unhappiness we feel like hell a low-grade misery pervades everything we're bored we're restless we can't get no satisfaction and there's guilt but we cannot put our finger on the source so again, it's going to, it's, you know, him saying, you know, it's going to manifest as depression, aggression, dysfunction, um, the actual crime and, oh, then actual crime and physical self-destruction, depending on how, um, pervasive and, and long you let it go, according to Stephen. Um, so it sounds like life, I know it isn't, it's resistance. So what makes it tricky is, so he's labeling like all hardship here as like resistance, which um, it may or may not be helpful for you to think of it that way. Um, I think that the more you can be objective about whatever the behavior is that you want to change, that um, it helps to put some distance between you and the action. Um, I, like I said, like I just try to treat myself like a little kid. Like if I don't feel good, like, is it because I haven't worked out? Is it because I haven't eaten? Is it because I haven't slept? Or is it because I haven't made some art? Um, and a lot of times too, we're social creatures. So have I not like talked to my friends? So it's really just about like, like having a negative feeling and then like being able to like reframe it into like, well, I know how to fix this. Um, Zandra's saying again that uh, he's very black and white about it, which I think, um, you know, as, as you were saying, Zandra, like everybody's different and we can't like put everybody in the same bag. So again, like if this um, is helpful for you to think in this way, perfect. We've got some info for you. Um, if it's helpful for you to like alter it a little bit, that's cool too. Um, Zandra says it can be useful to get space from it. Yes. Yeah. So, um, like if I'm working on a project and my face has been in it for a while and it's just hours and hours, like sometimes the most constructive thing you can do is to get up and take a break, um, um, or to step back and look at it from a different perspective. Um, right. So Kim says all vices kick in what dope adultery and web surfing. <laughs> and Sandra says it isn't always right to, 
So Zondra's saying it is useful to get space from things, but she says it isn't always right. So again, it's like we're, we're in this very like relative topic. Um, and, you know, I think all of us are agreeing that it's not just black and white. And I think that's a little bit of an antiquated, like as uh, Kim pointed out, it's kind of like an antiquated um, uh, view. Um, but that doesn't mean that everything is going to be unhelpful here. Um, so Zondra's saying, I mean, to give him some credit, Julia did say adultery was one of the distractions. I don't remember her words. A way to sabotage self. Oh, right, 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 right. Remember, because last week we were, um, so in Julia Cameron um, in The Artist's Way said that adultery was a distraction. And then last week we actually went through the book here um, and there was a page from last week where you're like, this guy's a dude because he was talking about like using sex as a distraction from like doing the things that you need to do. And I think that anything that can give you that release of dopamine or like the pleasure center, um, I think that anything that releases that or does that with our minds can be, um, it can be a distraction and a way to self-sabotage because you're just going to go and do that thing instead of, um, you know, whatever project you're working on. But <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, so to give him some credit, yeah, so so Zondra's giving um, Stephen credit here because, you know, this is a recurring theme in some of these books that we've been reading um, that people have been been saying, um, and I think that, again, anything that can be pleasurable can be used as a distraction, and I just as equally, um, anything that causes you pain can be used as a distraction. <laughs> it's like, it's like everybody's different, so... And then uh, Zondra says, just a little bit of credit, wiki face. <laughs> right? I don't know. So I guess down here he's saying that um, with the resistance and unhappiness, he's saying we unplug ourselves. Wait. So we unplug ourselves from the grid by recognizing that we will never cure our restlessness by contributing to our disposable income to the bottom line of bullshit ink, but only by doing our work. So here he's basically saying money doesn't buy happiness. You know, you can't buy your buy yourself the nice enough stuff um, to avoid, de uh, you know, your unhappiness. And he's saying that your unhappiness really can only be like overcome by like fulfilling those those things that oftentimes scare us um, or that we are resistant to, um, to doing the things that we keep continuing to think about and feel terrible for not doing. Um, Sandra's saying this section got her in the feels. Um, speaking of uh, things getting us in the feels here, um, I had the opportunity to watch some of Zandra's um, videos that she made um, and she had some beautiful, beautiful vocal performances and uh, by the way, Zandra, um, did you get a chance to check out the Dresden dolls? Uh, when Zandra was singing, I told her that she sounded, uh, she had like a little bit of an Amanda Palmer flair to her. And she was talking about reading one of Amanda Palmer's books, but she didn't realize she was singing. So the Dresden dolls, um, is a band that Amanda Palmer was in and, uh, they got just the, the vocals in that are, are really fun and, it's like um, old timey saloon piano, like kind of funky, like blues kind of music sounding. It's really pretty. Um, Zondra says, don't know if you ever saw Avatar, but there's a part where the human is taming the bird thing and he asks, how will I know the right one? <laughs> He'll try to kill you. <laughs> uh, so yes, Zondra, I've seen that and, and the natives respond, it will try and kill you. And I feel like that is all creative endeavors. Exactly. Um, the, the amount of times that I sit down to, and I say to myself, I hate painting. I never want to paint again. And it's just like, okay, like that's what you do. Like, you know, it tries to kill you. Um, I made a post the other day where like, um, sometimes I, I, I was talking about how when I'm painting, it feels like I'm pulling like a part of my soul out of my chest. Um, sometimes it can be painful and sometimes it can be free flowing. Um, but regardless, I still feel like, you know, you guys have even said like that I put my soul into my painting and like, um, so it really does feel like it is a part of me. Like I've created it. Like I feel like my paintings are my babies, but they do try to kill me because, oh my God, like 
you know, if I don't do it, I'm damned. And if I do do it, sometimes it's like, oh man, sometimes it's like, this sucks. But then I always feel better afterward. Um, it's very uh, cathartic and uh, healing, right? So having a craft can be can be cathartic and healing. Um, getting in touch with your mind, your body, getting in that flow. Zondra says, thank you guys. I haven't listened to Dresden Dolls yet, but I, I maybe I will have time today. And then Kim says, oh my God, she can sing, Zondra. I watched them also, totally blew me away. I'm tone deaf and I loved them. So yes, Zandra is an amazing, talented, very skilled woman who is um, blessing us all with her voice online. Um, you can check out her YouTube channel. It's just Zandra, Z-A-N-D-R-E. Um, and she has, she's the one, the picture with the blue hair. So um, very, very talented. Can't wait to hear more. So I'm very excited for your projects to come to fruition here because um, I just, I want to, I want to hear, I want to, and I want to see Jeremy's stuff too. I saw this picture of uh, Jeremy um, at his drums at this rock concert and I'm like, holy crap, Jeremy's a badass. Um, Zondra says, oh, I'm sorry. It's X. I'm sorry. X A N D R E. My bad. I know. I'm like reading your name and spelling it how spelling it wrong. And then Zondra says, yeah, Jer's a badass. Right. I got some cool friends, you guys. <laughs> um, so re resistance and fundamentalism. Now this is really interesting. Jawa says, way to go, Zandra. <laughs> um, so we've got some questions here. Uh, who am I? Why am I here? What is the meaning of life? So, you know, of course, like with uh, fundamentalism, we're like trying to answer these questions. And he's saying that um, humanity didn't have have a way to deal with these questions early early in the primitive stages of evolution so uh he's throwing around a lot of words like savagery and barbarism and nomadic culture and medieval society and he's saying that uh the advent of modern modern oh my god modernity i can't speak okay um <laughs> so he's saying the birth of freedom and of the individual that such matters ascended to the fore. Okay. I don't know what he's saying here. We, but he's saying that they're not easily because God, you guys, it's kind of like a, these are not easy questions. Who am I? Why am I here? They're not easy because the human being is not wired to function as an individual. We're wired tribally to act as a part of a group. Um, and he's saying that, all this about evolution, about our psyches, and that we have to fit in with the tribe. And the artist and the fundamentalist arise from societies at differing stages of development. The artist is the advanced model. He possesses affluent stability and the excessive resource to permit the luxury of self-examination. The artist. Okay, so I'm super grateful to be an artist. <laughs> Can I get a word? Um, and now... Uh, Zandra saying she had a friend who called her Z and we've known each other since middle school. So no judgment. Oh, goody. <laughs> and then she's saying, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jawa. Uh, Zandra saying this section changed my perspective of the world for all the subjective trash earlier. This gym was worth it. Kim says word. All right. So let's uh, I think I'm just going to like read this. Um, so let's see. So self-examination, right? So the artist is grounded in freedom. He's not afraid of it, which I think is like super important. I think all of us are like so programmed by society and by everything around us to do all these things that maybe don't make us happy. And I think that we need to really sit down as individuals and rediscover how happy we are. So Zandra saying word, word, Kim, and then spoken like woo, woo. Oh, Word, word, Kim. Oh, <laughs> I see. Word, word. All right, Zandra, I got you, boo. <laughs> oh, man. So let's see. The fundament. So the artist has faith that humankind is advancing, however, haltingly and imperfectly toward a better world, right? Like, so that's that's a nice outlook to have. I think, you know, I, that's what I want to live like. So the fundamentalist entertains no such notion. In his view, humanity has fallen from a higher state. The truth is not out there awaiting revelation. 
it's already been revealed. So the word of God has been spoken and recorded by his prophet. He is Jesus Muhammad or Karl Marx. Fundamentalism is the philosophy of the powerless, the conquered, the displaced, and the dispossessed. Ooh, right, because you need someone else to save you. So its spawning ground is the wreckage of political and military defeat. As Hebrew fundamentalism arose during the Babylonian captivity, as white Christian fundamentalism appeared in the American South during Reconstruction, the notion of master race evolved in Germany, blah, 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 blah. So in such desperate times, the vanquished race would perish without the doctrine that restored hope and pride. Um, Islamic fundamentalism ascends from the same landscape of despair and possesses the same tremendous and potent appeal. Okay, so I don't know the validity of the, the validity of any of this. Jaw was saying, wait, what? Lol. I know. I don't know the, the validity of any of this. Um, but he's saying fundamentalism is the philosophy of the powerless, the conquered, and displaced. So he's, um, so Zandra's saying it's very valid. Kim is saying exactly Jawa. So yeah, so he's basically saying that religion is used um, for people to feel like the world is okay, I guess. Um, so to cure their despair, what? So so supposedly these fundamentalists despair freedom. So I think what it is, is like a lot of times religions have been used by governments to control people. So Zondra saying all those references are historically accurate, very much historically accurate. Um, Zondra saying there are certain trends in the world cultures that can be seen from a higher view, and this is one. So Jaw was asking if I can explain this to him. Um, so I think, I think he's pointing to the fact that oftentimes religions are used by government to control people. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, he's, this is like, almost like a, a little bit of, I don't really know what I'm reading. <laughs> so, um, so he's saying the fundamentalist cannot find his way into the future, so he retreats to the past. So he's saying that these, these fundamentalists, so like the fundamentalist groups, I think, are the, um, the more radical ones. So Kim is saying people are sheep and follow the master. Sandra saying it's a way for a culture to reclaim an identity that isn't loser. So uh, Jawa says, I guess that can put people in a sort of box. Um, and Zondra says, if one is a loser in the present, then the past is better. Okay, so. Yeah. Um. I see what I see what Zandra's saying here, um, and I think she's right. Um, so Kim says heavy. Um, so yeah, so so these people that had um, got swept away by what everybody else was doing, um, whether it be immoral or not, he's pointing to a lot of very like immoral things like genocide that um, and war crimes that have happened, um, and then he's saying that the people that followed along with that were left with like a heavy despair and that um, religion has, or fundamentalism, extreme fundamentalism um, was the basis of that. Um, and that at the core, they feel powerless, conquer, displaced, dispossessed. So they can't find their way into the future. So they have to retreat to the past. Um, so it's, so he's saying, he's pointing at fundamentalism as being antiquated and like a crutch or whatever. So Zandra says the section is very heavy and she says it's like the people who still love and miss high school because that was when they were cool. Oh, right. Yeah. Before you did that bad thing, before you, um, you know, lost your way, right. Um, before you wasted your life. Um, so I heard this quote the other day and I was just dying laughing. It was, um, talking about, uh, the quarantine, right. Um, and they said, if I wanted to waste my waste my thirties uh, 
referring to the quarantine, I would have got married and had kids. <laughs> and it just made me laugh. Okay, so maybe that will bring some levity to this. Um, so Zandra saying, before you were fat, balding, and working a crappy sales job, lol. I know, right? <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure out how this is relating to our resistance thing. Um, Jawa says, wow, sad. <laughs> It's pretty sad. That's why it's like, you know, you, you go, you go with the flow and you know where you're going to end up. Right. Um, so he's saying that, okay, so the fundamentalist can't find his way into the future. So he retreats to the past. He returns to imagination. He returns in imagination to the glory days of his race. Okay. Just like Zandra saying about going back to high school and the glory days. Um, and he seeks to reconstitute both them and himself into their pure, more virtuous light. He gets back to basics, to fundamentals. So fundamentalism and art are mutually exclusive. There is no such thing as fundamentalist art. This does not mean that the fundamentalist is not creative. Rather, his creativity is inverted. He creates destruction. Um, it, even the structures he builds are dedicated to annihilation of his enemies and of himself. Ooh, he's talking about schools, networks, organizations. So the fund <laughs> what? Ugh, he says the fundamentalist reserves his greatest creativity for the fashioning of Satan. The image of his foe in the opposition to which he defines and gives. Okay, so what he's saying is the fundamentalist spends his days fighting against whatever he perceives to be evil and thus just puts all of his focus on a bunch of negative shit. Uh, Kim says at my 30 year high school reunion, everybody was like, how are you so cool now? In high school, you were a loser. So different, a hippie out of the past. Wow, your classmates were jackasses. <laughs> like a backhanded compliment. You are cool, Kim, by the way. Um, that's rude. Uh, Zandra says, nice, Kim. Kim says, shit, I just aged myself. Jawa says, it's interesting how things that are cool now weren't even when I was in high school, which was 10 years ago. I know it's really crazy because now I'm coming up to this time where I'm like, I said something the other day where I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to take something. And I go, oh, I just aged myself. Like, you know, who says tape anymore? Um, I do. <laughs> so I feel it. I feel it. Um, yeah. Like things that are cool now, like. Right? Like all my 90s gear as a kid, now it's like popular again. I'm like, oh, wow, I should have kept all my kid clothes. Not really, but <laughs> it's kind of weird. I know. And now it's like cool to be different. So all the all the really different people are actually thriving because <laughs> we've been different all along. Sandra says, I put, I say put out a record and those haven't been around since before I was born. <laughs> well, I mean, you can go to specialty stores and get them, but um, yeah, put out a record like you want to. Oh yeah. Cause when you guys are making music. Yes. So what do they call it now? Um, you got to release your EP, release your album. I guess they would say. <laughs> so he down here, resistance to the fundamentalist is the call of the even evil one, seeking to seduce him from virtue, right? So it's like the, you know, the image of the devil, right? Like, oh, the demons are there to try and, like, get you to do the wrong things. All these fundamentalist things are. <laughs> so Zandra says, it's album now and EP if you're, if you're in rap. Um, Kim says, people are buying them now. So many used LP stores here. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool, right? It's cool now. You can't, it's like, um, you got to find the, find the record. You have to go on a hunt for it. Like it makes it more interesting and fun. Oh my gosh. So the fundament, I don't, oh God. So he's saying the fundamentalist is, you know, obsessed with Satan, World Trade Center. Oh my gosh. The humanist believes, why are we getting into all this? This is what I want to know. Um, so down here he says, I have learned to exist as an autonomous individual. If indeed I have, only by a whisker and at a cost I would hate to have to reckon up. Okay, so now we're circling back to the point, which is, I don't know why he went through all this. Um, so the point is that we're raised as like um, social creatures and like he's saying down here, 
that it's probably better if we can find our own individualism. So the paradox seems to be, as Socrates demonstrated long ago, that the truly free individual is free only to the extent of his own self-mastery, while those who will not govern themselves are condemned to find masters to govern over them. This is a beautiful quote, and I love it. Um, this brings to mind, you know, um, it's just diligence and dedication and obviously self mastery here. So um, this is a very black and white um, thing here. I think we got the point here. We went on it like three page rant about these fundamentalists um, just to say that, you know, those are the people that require other people to govern them, tell them what to do, go here, go here. Those are, you know, as we said, sheep, um, the truly free individual is free only to the extent of his own self mastery. So it's like this, like I wrote down like what my perfect day would be. Um, and then I had like a week off and then only a couple of those days did I actually take the initiative to do my perfect day. But what's really interesting is that the list of things on my perfect day, I can easily do at, at any time with no money. I don't have to go anywhere. It's, you know, wake up, do some yoga, drink my coffee, water my plants, go outside in the garden, you know, paint, make some art, and then maybe like go out and hang with friends, right? So how often do you do your perfect day, even if it's just simple like that? Like, um, Oftentimes, you know, I'll avoid working out or I'll avoid sitting down at the canvas or, you know, I won't feel like it. So I won't get up and do it. Right. So we need that self mastery over ourselves, even to have our most enjoyable day sometimes. Um, and not to say that, you know, vegging out watching TV isn't enjoyable, but it's less fulfilling. You get less um, you get less of a long term positive feeling from watching TV than you do from exercise or practicing your craft, right? So I think they did a study and it was like, you get like four times longer of satisfaction from working on your craft um, and working on a hobby than you do from watching TV. Um, so the satisfaction lasts longer um, and you feel much more better. It, like the results are like way more positive. So um, I think overall, yeah, self mastery is going to be a great way for us to feel better about ourselves and throughout the day. Um, so I agree with that. Let me know what y'all thought. That was a lot. Um, but I think I think I got the nugget of wisdom out of here. Um, Zondra's in there in the chat saying words. So Zondra's with me. Um, so right now we're at page 38. That was heavy. Um, that was a lot for me to <laughs> try and sort through right now. Um, so hopefully y'all are still with me. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, hopefully we kind of talked that through enough. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get some good out of that um, self-mastery, right? Don't be a sheep. So resistance and criticism. This is really interesting. Um, if you find yourself criticizing other people, you're probably doing it out of resistance. When we see others beginning to live their authentic selves, it drives us crazy if we have not lived at our own, right? Like it's just like um, that one art, that local artist I was talking about how, you know, she's got like all these like four businesses going and she's like killing it. And like, I found myself being like, like jealous and it's like, you know, why does she get to do that? I mean, and I don't. And, you know, if you're feeling like that, it's like, okay, well, maybe you need to get up and do the work. Oh, Zondra says, wait, I thought that was it for today. I didn't read any further. Well, I'm going to read the last two pages because they're easy. Um, so you got, sorry. I thought we were going to 39. Um, Zondra gives me a smiley face. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for understanding. Yeah, I want to read something else after that. <laughs> so yeah, so instead of criticizing other people, um, realize that, you know, maybe there's some jealousy, maybe, you know, maybe you need to show up and do your work, and you're only being critical because you haven't done your own work, right? Like, this is just another pitfall we can fall into. Um, individuals who are realized in their own lives almost never criticize others. If they speak at all, it's to offer encouragement. 
Oh, yeah. Watch yourself. All of the manifestations of resistance mostly harm ourselves. So criticism and cruelty harm others as well. Jawa says, this reminds me of the artist's way and the part about the shadow artists and crazy makers. Sandra says, yes, Jawa. Yeah, no, I agree with you because the crazy makers are the ones that criticize people, right? If I remember correctly. Um, the artist way in the part about the shadow artists, right? So the shadow artists were the ones that weren't like showing up and doing it, right? So they were the ones that, you know, didn't believe that they could be, um, that didn't believe that they could be an artist or, you know, they would always live vicariously through other, other people. Right. So it goes back even to that, that topic about, you know, your partner and having a partner that excels above you. Um, you're a shadow, like you can often be a shadow artist in that your partner and other people are doing the things that you want. And then it's intimidating you and you're circling back down into your shell. And like, all you want to do is maybe support them because you don't think you can. Um, Zondra's in the chat going, yes, Jawa. Um, so yeah, I think we're all, we can all find ourselves there at one point or another, you know, it's important to just recognize it and redirect. Um, you know, watch yourself of all the manifestations of resistance most only harm ourselves, but criticism and cruelty harm others as well. And the last thing that we want to do is to give somebody else, you know, any more negativity, right? So resistance and self-doubt. This is the last page I'm going to read, you guys. Self-doubt can be an ally. What? What do you mean, Stephen? This is because it serves as an indicator of aspiration. Ooh, so if you feel self-doubt, it means you're aspiring to something that will cause growth, right? So in here, he says it reflects love, love of something we dream of doing and desire, desire to do it. Um, if you find yourself asking yourself and your friends, am I really a writer? Am I really an artist? Chances are that you are. The counterfeit innovator is wildly self-confident. The real one is scared to death. I think that's a beautiful place to close this discussion. This was an interesting discussion today. Um, I'm thankful for you guys here in the chat room helping me through this. Um, thankful for you guys showing up and uh, coming to join me to read again. So down here in the chat, we have Kim saying, so after reading him, I had to reboot and went to listen to the, the Laboratorium Piesny to get back into my happy place. They are Polish women that sing and chant and to watch them is so enlightening. Oh, this sounds so beautiful. I love um, I love cultural, cultural music, world music. Um, Zondra says, wow, sounds interesting, Kim. So it's called the Laboratium Piesny. I'm actually gonna copy this and I'm gonna listen to this music. Um, so Kim found that after reading this book, she had to like get back in a happy place, which I'm sorry that this uh, threw you down that hole. Um, let's go through and pick our next week's pages. So I read through all the way to 39. So let's read to, let's read 42. Let's go one, two. Let's read all the way through. Ooh. Let's read to page um, page 40 to, to 54. So let's read page 40 to 54. And um, we'll meet back here next week at 2, 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. So Jawa says it sounds wonderful, the music that Kim was recommending to us. Sandra says page 59, a.k.a. start of book two. Perfect, Sandra. I should have looked up sooner. Let's do that. Um, oh, the start of book two. So the start of book two is. Oh, I see. Let's do this. Do we want to read all the way to there? Let's read all the way to there. Okay, so let's read all the way to page 50. So 57 is the last the last page in the book. So let's read all the way to page 57. Um, that's 17 pages, which is kind of a lot. Um, but I think we'll get through it. I think we'll get through it. I'll do better about my review next week. 
Um, Kim says, power through. I know you guys want to start a new book already, huh? <laughs> uh, okay, well, um, Zondra sent like a bunch of book ideas. I know Kim has book ideas. Um, I'm grateful you guys showed up again. Uh, again, that's, oh, I already said it enough times, but 40 to 57, we'll read through. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess. Oops, yeah, Zondra says, I want to know Kim's book ideas. How about this? Let's go to the Facebook group, um, Creative Club with Sari Luna, and let's put our book ideas in there. Um, and then based on the response in there, let's do a poll. I don't know. Or, like, let's just put them all in there, and we'll figure out how, we're, how we'll pick the next one, okay? Um, and, Jawa, if you are on Facebook, uh, the Facebook group is, is just facebook.com, of course, forward slash creative club with Sari Luna, I think. Um, and you can go ahead and, like, join and share your art and your, your creations and get to see other people doing things. Um, Kim says, can they be books about artists and novels? Ooh, that would be fun. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, Zondra says, no. Z novels, meh. <laughs> all right well we can suggest them um and if it's good enough maybe Zondra will be on board um a book about writing a novel sure <laughs> all right but I think it might be interesting to do books about creators I think that might be interesting so Jabba says okay cool I'll check it out yeah so let's let's kick the idea around um we we can consider these books. Um, I think I think Zondra might be right. Novels might be kind of harder. Um, I am into learning about other creators. Oh, Kim says a quick read. Yeah. So Zondra likes the book about creators idea. Yeah, I think um I think a more like informational would be great. Um, I think it's also really cool to study creators. Um, um, a novel might be kind of tough. I do like that idea. Um, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, I have a book. It's called Sunflowers, and it's about um, it's about Van Gogh uh, and how they supposed he lived in his life. It's really good. You should check it out. Um, Kim says a quick read, nonfiction. Kim Joy says nonfiction. So Jawa says, are you going to finish this one or not? Yeah, we're going to finish this book. We're almost done. We're halfway through it. Um, this is week three, and we're halfway through it. So. Um, we might as well just finish it. Uh, Zondra says we're going to get to the finish line. Um, yeah, we'll just power through it. Um, I like I like that we can have the discussion about it. because Some of this stuff I'm just like, I don't quite know how I feel about it completely. And it helps to talk it out. Jawa says, okay, cool. Zondra says we also have Art and Fear. Um, yeah, I do want to read Art and Fear. Um, I don't know. I, I had it over there. Anyway, but yeah, now I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, so Kim says, yes, finish. We never leave anything unfinished. Oof. Right. Please, let's finish our projects. Um, if you guys have anything super sweet going on, share it in the Facebook group. Uh, please like this video. Share it with anyone you think would be interested. Uh, and yeah, we'll uh, touch base here next week. And I'm trying to go have like a super chill Sunday. Um... So have a wonderful week, you guys, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you again for joining me. Um, I hope we had a good good trip here. So super chill Sunday. Woot! Have a good week. You too, Zandra. I appreciate it. Love you guys. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. So cool that this video will be on YouTube forever. <laughs> right? Bye, Jala. See you. <laughs> Peace.